Kentucky Sports celebrates its 20th anniversary of covering the Kentucky Derby. For once, it's a gorgeous afternoon in the bluegrass, temperature about 75 degrees. We have one of the largest fields in Derby history, 19 horses. The most international of all derbies, with entrants from England, Canada, and the first ever from Japan. The track lightning fast this afternoon. The barns at Churchill Downs are located behind the backstretch, and this is known as the walkover. It's a, a great sight, 130,000 people looking on, and here come the horses and the connections, and walking over with a guy who certainly knows his way into the winner's circle is Charleston. Only one trainer in Kentucky Derby history has a better winning percentage than Nick Zito. That's Henry Forrest. He was two for two. Nick Zito is two for three. And Nick, you're trying it again right now with suave prospect. This is a colt whose stamina is a little suspect. He's failed twice at a mile and an eighth. Why can he get a mile and a quarter? Because he's got a big heart, Chelsea. And you know about hearts. You've been on him plenty of good horses, and when they got the heart, that's all you need. He also has a track that's pretty fast today. That's going to suit his style, isn't it? Well, I think so. You know, he, again, he never runs a bad race, and that's going to get him there, I think. Uh, you know, he's consistent. Consistent makes you good. And we got a good shot, and believe me, he's got a big heart. I'll tell you what, if the crowd is any help, they love Nick Zito here. You can hear him cheering. Leslie? Charles, I'm with a man who has grew up in the thoroughbred business but never came to the Kentucky Derby before, Jum Run owner Charlie Dunn. What took you so long? <laughs> I don't know, but I think I'm getting here rather quick for uh, most standards. I can't tell you how exciting it is. You're walking alongside your horse. Some owners have called this an out-of-body experience. Uh, that's probably what it is, so I don't really know what I'm saying right now, but uh, I'm just tickled to death to be here. And thank God for the opportunity. It's your first time here. It's your trainer's first time here. It's your jockey's first time here. What gives you confidence against this field? Uh, they're all great people. He's a great trainer. He's a fantastic jockey. Uh, and the horse, a fantastic horse, so I'm just real confident in their ability. Well, good luck to you, and as you know, Al, his trainer, Gary Lewis, is a former pharmacist, so maybe he'll give Charlie something to calm down. Always a, a number of great stories at Churchill Downs this year, no exception, and always the sale of mint juleps by the thousands there dispensed at 550 a pop. Let's take a look at, at some of the contenders. And isn't it interesting to note that Afternoon Delights at odds of 9 to 1 would be undefeated were it not for a loss by a head in his last race. And jockey Kent DeSormo took full responsibility for that photo finish defeat. You know, Al, if Afternoon Delights would have won that race by the bob of a head or a better ride by an inch, he'd be undefeated and he'd be the favorite here today. Now he's a big price. Yeah. Five wins and a second. Thunder Gulch is a big price. He won two races in Florida, threw in a clunker in the bluegrass, and thus he's one of the longest shots in the field right now, trained by Wayne Lucas. Gary Stevens will be the rider. Tejano Run is a horse who was stabled as of this morning at Keeneland. Uh, they elected to keep him about an hour and a half away and vanned him here at 6 o'clock in the morning. So Tahana Run has already had a long day. And Jumron is an interesting horse because he came uh, from far back and almost captured the Santa Anita Derby. And I look, Dave, at Tahano Run and Jumron, and they have similar styles. But they, there always seem to be horses like this that promise more than they deliver. You know, the reason might be the distance a mile and a quarter. Everybody expects them to do better with that extra eighth of a mile, but they rarely do. Eltish ships in from England. Now, here is a horse who has raced just once in 1995. And if anything can win this race for him, it's the trainer, Henry Cecil. He, he won a two-and-a-half-mile race with a horse that hadn't been on the track for a year and a half over in England a couple years ago. Cecil on the left holding the saddle. Then there's Timber Country. Now, when he was here last November, he won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, but he's not won a race in 1995. Wayne Lucas keeps saying he just didn't like the Santa Anita track. And people say that he doesn't like the post position, but uh, he's got that big gap between the gates to his left, so I think he'd be all right. Serena's song, the filly, it looked like she was headed for the Oaks, but before we get to her, Talking Man is the horse in your picture right here. Won the Gotham, won the Wood. New York loves this horse. He figures to be out, not necessarily on the front end, but clearly near it, because on the front end, figures to be Serena Saunders. And this horse fits the pattern of horses who have won the race recently. Horses who are stalkers have not done well in the Kentucky Derby. It's, there's a lot of speed. It's either legitimate and it holds, or it's cheap and it folds up and sets it up for a horse to come from out of the cloud. So uh, the stalkers don't do well. No favorites once in 79, and we haven't had a winner since 89. Come on, break the string. for me. Okay. <laughs> I think Lucas will win it with Timber Country. How about you? I'm always looking for value. I like 
Eltish mm -hmm. at 11 to 1 currently. Chaucey, who's your winner? Well, they say to win the Derby, you've got to be good and lucky, but if you have your choice, pick lucky. And I think Timber Country will have to be lucky to get the edge over my other three top picks, Eltish, Jumrod, and Talkin' Man. Leslie, what's your choice? Charles C., picking a favorite in the Kentucky Derby lately is like picking the AFC in the Super Bowl, but I'm going with Serena Song. She has five straight wins. She has the ability to get on the lead, to stay out of trouble. She might have to win it wire to wire, but Jim McCray, I think she'll do it. Well, Leslie, I'll tell you, I've changed my mind more than a few times on this race, but I finally decided I'll go with that entry of Serena Song in Timber Country, and I think Timber Country will be the one to win the race. My exacta is a box of Timber Country and Afternoon Delights, but it'll be Timber Country in that most elusive of all racing places, the winner's circle at Churchill Downs. Post parade, here are the horses. Number one is Pyramid Peak. He is part of an entry along with Jambalaya Jazz, each owned by John in the field. Oxley and trained by John and Donna Ward. Jambalaya Jazz, ridden by Craig Perrette, who rode unbridled to a win in the 1990 Derby. Serena Song, part of the Wayne Lucas entry, number two, owned by Bob and Beverly Lewis. And the reason he is coupled with, or she is coupled with Timber Country, is that Bob and Beverly Lewis own one third of this horse, written by Pat Day, the winningest rider in the history of Churchill Downs. Dazzling Falls, winner of the Remington Park Derby and the Arkansas Derby, is number three, a late runner. Wild Sin went gate to wire to win the Bluegrass, the much and off injured. Randy Romero making another comeback. Good to see. And making another comeback as well. Julie Crone, who's been seriously injured on a couple of occasions. She's aboard Suave Prospect, a contender. Nick Zito seeks his third derby win. Eltish ships in. Eddie Delahousey is great with rear runners, a guy who can pick a spot and find a spot and knows his way to the winner's circle. Jumron, another late runner, number seven. Gonsolino Almeida, a Brazilian, is the rider. His first derby. Talking man. After the two wins in New York, Mike Smith is up. Roger Atfield, the trainer. Afternoon delights with five wins and a second. Afternoon delights the Burt Backrack horse. Richard Mandela, who won the earlier turf race. The trainer, Kent DeSormo, the rider. Tejano Run who came in this morning, as we mentioned before, from Keeneland. Jerry Bailey up. He rode Sea Hero to a win in 93. Kenny McPeak trains him. Thunder Gulch, Gary Stevens aboard. He was aboard winning colors in 88 for Lucas, the 6-5 to five favorite in the Bluegrass, who finished fourth in that race. Number 12 is Nakadoon, one of the field horses. He gets Chris McCarron, though, in the saddle, a Hall of Famer and two-time Derby winner. Lake George, named after that lake, the beautiful lake in upstate New York near Saratoga, ridden by Shane Sellers. Number 14 is in character, a late-charging horse, Chris Antley, another Derby winner. He was aboard Strike to Gold in the iron. Ski captain, the horse from Japan, we have talked about him. Yutaka Taki comes in from Japan to ride him. Meki, number 16, has not won a race in his last six. Robbie Davis, over 2,200 career wins, but it's his first derby mount. And rounding out the field, number 17 is Citadid. Eddie Maple, the veteran jockey, his last win was a year ago in May of 94. Let's go back to Charles C. Canty. Well, this field not only has size, but it has depth. Just consider the credentials of some of the long shots. There's the honest, consistent, Nebraska-bred colt, Dazzling Falls. He won the Remington Derby and the Arkansas Derby. He's always closing fast in the stretch. Or there's Wild Sin, the upset winner of the Bluegrass. Now, he didn't just steal that race on an easy lead. He blew him away with a final three-eighths of a mile in 36 seconds flat. Or there's Pyramid Peak. He won four out of five lifetime, including the Flamingo Stakes. This owner-trainer rider combination pulled a major upset in the Oaks yesterday, and they're hoping to become the first since Ben Jones and Calumet to pull it off again. There's Jambalaya Jazz, a couple in the wagering at Pyramid Peak. Jerry Bailey right there with Tejano Run, and there is Timber Country, last year's two-year-old champion with Pat Day, moving into the first stall of the auxiliary gate. Interesting that the horse from Japan, Ski right, Captain, was really never let go to gallop. The two handlers just stood aside him as he get, came to the gate. There's Lake George, part of the six-horse mutual field. Just a couple more to load. Mackey wow, moves in. And Citadine. Is that great horse the six out starts, there, all right? of those in Europe. All three-year-olds. The filly carries five pounds less. 126 for the males. Away 
away quickly. And Serena's song is expected on the outside. Along the inside, Wild Sin takes up the chase. Sid indeed in the middle of the racetrack as that passes for the first time. Serena's song on the outside leads it. Wild Sin at the rail is second. Sid indeed right there, third talking man. In tight quarters between horses, fourth. Pyramid Peak at the rail is fifth. Thunder goes to close up sixth. Afternoon delight. Three wide is seventh. That Jumron racing a close up eight at the rail. Swab prospect saving ground in ninth. Then Lake George is tenth. Eltish is eleventh. Gap of two. Tejano run is twelfth. Dazzling Falls race is thirteenth. On the outside, Timber Country is next. Then comes in character, Mecky. Ski captain is third last. Jambalaya Jazz is second last. And at the back of the pack, that's Nakadoon, 19th and last. Down the back stretch, it's still Serena's song. Corey Nakatani aboard. He's trying to win this one wire to wire. Wild Sin with Randy Romero on the outside. Then a wall of horses charging up. And Sinity, a long shot. Part of the mutual field is right there. Sinity takes up the chase and the challenge and moves on Serena's song. But Corey Nakatani lets him notch out. It's still Serena's song. Sinity now talking man is in gear on the inside in blue and white colors. On the outside, Thunder Gulch with the white blinkers and Gary Stevens aboard has something to say about this derby as they turn for home a little more than a quarter of a mile to go. Serena Song desperate to hang on between horses. Talking man on the inside, but Thunder Gulch emerges with the lead and Thunder Gulch with Gary Stevens takes command. Talking man along the inside and now here comes Tahano Run, and in the middle of the racetrack, it's Elsish, along with Jumron, and down the stretch they come in the derby, and here's the winner, it's Thunder Gulch, Lucas wins it with the lesser of the three horses he trained, how about that, Thunder Gulch wins it, Timber Country was flying, it's photographs all around for the place and show spots, Gary Stevens, who won it with winning colors, wins it again. Michael Tabor, who is victorious in the winner's circle in Florida, now gets to go to the winner's circle at Churchill Downs on Derby Day. Bob Lewis, right there with a smile on his face, wonderful, a good wonderful loser. Fantastic. Fantastic is right, Bob. This was one hell of a race. 19 horses, and it's Thunder Gulch who comes home the winner. Now official, $51, $24.20 and $12.20. Tejano Run finishes second, $10.20 and $6.80. Timber Country gets up for third and pays 380. The exact of 480. The trifecta, $2,099. So a horse that wins the Fountain of Youth in the Florida Derby throws in one clunker in the bluegrass, and everybody says he's not worth a bet. He goes off at 24 to one. And of all things, Wayne Lucas has three horses in the race. Everybody talking about the other two, and Lucas goes to the winner's circle along with Gary Stevens, and that was the same tandem that brought winning colors home in 1988. Lucas goes for the second time, and so does Gary Stevens, who spent much of the winter riding in Hong Kong. Serena Song had the lead as the horses straightened out in the lane. But there she is walking back to the barn, and uh, well, you can second guess it, and everybody's got 2020 hindsight, but right now the Lewis is probably wishing that she'd run yesterday in the Kentucky Oaks. But that was yesterday, and this is today, and back to the winner's circle, and Thunder Gulch. Let's go to Leslie Visser. Al, a slightly dejected Corey Nakatani, a beautiful race. You had the lead. What happened? Well, I was just getting pressed the whole way. She never really had a chance to get a breather. Uh, going in the first round, I tried to let her go and open up a little bit and, and just sit on her, let her do it on her own. And uh, come, it just shows that she went too fast. And uh, when we got to the quarter pole, she was getting a little tired. So I just, there's not much I could do with her after that. I just tried to help her down the stretch. And I went to ask her to go a little bit more and give her a little bit more. And she did, but then she just really got tired because it's just, this track really isn't favoring speed, I don't think. And, uh, it was, it was real tough because she never really got a chance to get a breather. Well, you'll get a derby one of these days. Let's go to Charlie. Well, we knew it would take a matter of luck to get Timber Country through that traffic, and Pat, uh, you did have some traffic troubles. Yeah, we really did. He, he broke sharp, but uh, as usual, he dropped back, and, uh, you know, we, 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 have, we were hoping that we would get a clean trip. We didn't. Uh, we followed Tahana Run for the most part, but uh, we, just, we just didn't get the brakes. He come running. He finished up real good. It was a big effort. I, you know... Uh, 19 horses, you got to have some racing luck, and um, certainly my congratulations to the connections of Thunder Gulch and uh, you know, and to Gary Stevens, they done a fine job. 
Got part of the team home anyway. Back upstairs to Al Michaels. Okay, Charles, see, Thunder Gulch was ridden by Gary Stevens back at Aqueduct last November, and irony of ironies, Gary Stevens would have ridden Larry the Legend in this race today had that horse not been hurt. Let's go back. Dave Johnson, look at the start of the yeah, race. he said he'd only come back for three horses, and this was one of them right there, out there in the auxiliary gate, Thunder Gulch. From the bell, it was Serena's song with the yellow cap. She had a good run, and she was actually setting faster fractions than winning colors. Winning colors raced three quarters in 111 and two. This horse went three quarters in 110 and one, so she was much faster than winning colors early in the race, and of course she faded, setting it up for a come from behind her. Watch for the white blinkers, watch for Gary Stevens, and as Corey said, well, let me play, phrase it differently. You rarely get a breather in the Kentucky dirt. Mm -hmm. First quarter, in 22 and 2, the half in 45 and 4, they went six furlongs in 110 and 1, and let's pick it up on the far turn. Breathing down her neck, here comes Gary Stevens in the orange and blue colors and the white blinkers. That's Thunder Gulch, six to five in the blue grass. Grass pays $51 today. Talking man found some room along the inside rail. Looked like he was going to be part of it for the last furlong, but Gary Stevens with a strong ride comes all the way from Hong Kong for a reason. Thunder Gulch. Trained by Wayne Luke. What a mark. Thunder Gulch at odds of 24 to 1. The reason he was not coupled with the other Lucas horses is that there was a commonality of ownership with Bob and Beverly Lewis owning the other two horses, the other two Lucas trained horses. This one, a separate horse because of separate ownership. Michael Tabor owning this horse, Thunder Gulch, who takes Gary Stevens and Wayne Lucas into the winner's circle in a good time, 2-0-1 and 1. Tejano Run gets up for the play spot. Timber Country from traffic problems finishes third. And the seven horse, Jim Ron, was fourth. The winners and with Tom Meeker, the president of Churchill Downs, congratulations on the second biggest crowd of all time, 144,010, I am told, and on another wonderful dirt. We're absolutely, I mean, it couldn't have been a better day here in Kentucky. The last two days have been great and great racing and a great surprise today. Great, it gives me great pleasure in introducing our governor, Brereton C. Jones, the governor of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Governor? Thank you very much. It's with tremendous pleasure that I have the opportunity as governor of the Commonwealth to present to Mr. Tabor the most important trophy, I believe, in all of racing for the greatest race in the world, and that's the Kentucky Derby. You deserve it, Mr. Tabor. You had the good judgment to choose one of the preeminent trainers in the world, one of the greatest jockeys that ever rode. It all came together for you, and congratulations. Thank you very much, indeed. Okay, Mr. Tabor. <laughs> First Derby victory for Monaco, I think, where you, you well, spent a I'd lot of your time. I'd be very surprised if anybody else from Monaco has won the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> you, you were very wise to pick up this horse at the end of his two-year-old year. Well, it was thanks to uh, Demi O'Byrne, who's a very good friend of mine. He lives in Ireland, and uh, it was his choice. And uh, I can't thank him enough because uh, his judgment has been supreme. Wayne? I don't know, what a sneaky thing to do all week long. Everybody, including you, has been talking about timber country and the Philly, and here you win with Thunder Gulch. Well, it's such a difficult race to win. I thought we needed three of them as bad as we're going. <laughs> so, we, I, I felt real good about him all week, and uh, he was standing between a ballerina and a two-year-old champion, but he's now uh, earned his own right to hold his head and walk down that track as derby champion. I think, obviously, he'll go on to the Preakness, but what about the other two? I think we'll, we'll consider the, certainly the Colt, and I'll get together with Mr. Lewis, and we'll look at the Philly. Uh, I can't say enough about Gary coming back early from his Hong Kong experience and the ride he put on. It was just marvelous, and thank you for the opportunity, Michael. For... <laughs> okay, but that is definite for the Preakness, obviously, for him. And the other two, going to think about it. I'm sure Timber Country will be there, and uh, we'll, we'll look at those two very seriously. General Manager of the Chrysler Plymouth Division. He's got the keys to something for Gary Stevens. Steve? Thanks, Jim. Gary, congratulations on a terrific race. Gary on behalf of uh, Chrysler Corporation and Chrysler Plymouth, I'd like to uh, present you with the keys to our newest all-new Chrysler. Enjoy it. Thank you. Great race. Thank you very much, and thank you to the Chrysler Corporation for the great sponsorship they put into this race. And uh, um, thank you, from, thank you, Kentucky.
Well, we talked about the international flavor of this race, and here we have an owner who spends time in Monaco, and he's an Englishman originally, and a jockey who spent the winter in Hong Kong, and who was originally supposed to ride Larry the Legend until he got hurt, a last-minute pickup, and you've won the Derby. It's a funny sport, isn't it? A funny sport. It's uh, been an unbelievable spring for me. Uh, Mr. Lucas had contacted me before the Santa Anita Derby and said, if Larry the Legend doesn't run well today, keep this horse as a, an option for yourself. So obviously, when we found out that he was injured, we got in contact with Wayne, and uh, it's just been that kind of year. Wayne does think ahead, you know. <laughs> Let's take another look at it from the far turn, if we can. Here we go. Well, I think uh, our, our main concern was the post position that we had, and uh, things couldn't have went smoother coming from the gate. We got over close to the rail. This horse was absolutely galloping down the backside and just had an unbelievable trip from that post position. Uh, I started putting him under a little pressure right here when Talking Man started getting through on the inside. This colt has had a, a habit of wanting to lay on other horses when you come into the stretch. Has never won a race by a, a big uh, margin like he has today. Um, he just absolutely accelerated right here and, and started the draw off and uh, the race was over. I mean, just an unbelievable feeling. There's no feeling like it. You had a little superstitious uh, occurrence in the paddock, right? Well, actually, uh, I had two, two superstitious uh, things happen today. Uh, Jeff Lucas out in the paddock uh, hadn't, hadn't legged me up on a horse here in Kentucky since 1988 with winning colors. Wayne said he was going to come back and leg me up. And I said, Jeff, you know, why don't you leg me up? So Jeff legged me up today. And also on Tuesday, I had a, a real close friend here in Kentucky that passed away that's been a main, mainstay here in Kentucky that has helped with the Kentucky Derby. And uh, I believe that I had an angel on me, my back today. Thank you, Mark Kaufman. I miss you. You guys have had angels for you. Certainly Jeff Lucas did, who almost died a, a little bit more than a year ago. There's Jeff back here. Jeff, great to have you back at the Derby. Well, it's enjoyable to be back after missing last year and having to watch on TV, but to be involved in the atmosphere here, being close up to a large situation and a large group of people that came to watch it was really enjoyable. And to have three horses that we led over here today all of, of top quality, and then to have one come through to the winner's circle was a great experience. The one that he saddled. <laughs> <laughs> and wonderful to have you back. I really mean that.